Facepalm America. I'm Beowulf Rockland. FacepalmAmerica.com is the place that you can go to find more information about us, what we do on this program. And uh, FacepalmAmerica.com is also where you can go to listen to past episodes of the show. You can connect with us on social media, all sorts of good things. As I've talked about on this program, there are millions of people who are caregivers for folks in their family, uh, you know, sometimes professionally, but, but often uh, it's for an elderly parent. Sometimes, as is the case with me, it's for uh, a, a child with disabilities. And this happens more than we think about or are made aware of just again and again through this country. We have stories about what it's like to raise a child. We have sort of like, you know, glowing, uh, glossed over stories about what it's like to be a, a senior in this uh, country. But the, the folks who make sure that, that, that stuff gets done day in and day out for these, uh, for these folks is, is not often told. And we certainly don't have enough cult- cultural markers around it in, in uh, I think, a really critical way. We don't have it that that this is something that happens all the time, and it's happening more and more since the uh, since the baby boom generation, especially, is getting older and and needing more and more care. And I think we need a lot more focus on on caregivers uh, in this country and indeed around the world. And it's the reason why um, I invited Marsha Gray Hill to speak with us today. She is the author of Grief and Grits. A Daughter's Journey of Love and Loss When the World Was Upside Down. Um, and as the title indicates, it's become an awful lot more complicated since uh, COVID uh, visited us and uh, and uh, continues to a, a lesser degree. It's something we have to think about. I was, I was on a phone call with, uh, you know, with someone yesterday uh, as just doing business for uh, our, our, uh, our production company, uh, Marsha, and uh, they happened to be like wearing a mask in a facility, dealing with their mom at the same time that they were on on the call with us. It's, it, I mean, it, it it affects every level of our society, and clearly, this happened with you as well. Yes, yes, I just heard that one in five Americans are yeah. unpaid caregivers. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of people caring for someone, like you said, someone with a child with a disability or a loved one. Or someone dying, or just you know, in any aspect, that many people are caregivers. Describe for us, if you could, what your life was uh, like uh, leading up to um, the the illness of your mother and and the the pandemic, because uh, it, it it's. Yeah. We, we all experience to one degree or another either these moments or these periods of, of transition into where we realize, oh, wow, okay, I, I have, I, I'm in that position and I've got to figure it out. Right, yes. Well, um, I have five children and 15 grandchildren, so my wow. life was pretty crazy. Wow. And, you know, wow. you grow up, your, your parents take care of you. You never really think about you're going to have to take care of them. But then it just right. happens out of the blue. My father died and I'm like, uh Oh, who's going to take care of mom. And yeah. at first she wasn't, she ended up having dementia and Alzheimer's, but at first it was just making sure she had the groceries and, you know, she could get to appointments and then it just starts slowly. You don't even know when that switch goes, you know, changes, but it just, it just happens. And then the roles reversed because she became my child. So I grieved yeah. my mother first, losing my mother. And then I was literally her mother for probably three or four years. And so you just don't expect that to happen. But for I took care of her for over eight years. And so it was just, it was very hard to juggle your own family life and manage your mother too. And you're so responsible. It's, um, yeah. It's just very challenging, but rewarding too. Yeah, no, it it, it definitely it, it definitely can be. But I, I do want to emphasize: you said that you did this for eight years, and I, I think sometimes when this is addressed in popular culture, and and it and it can be this, 
it's sometimes oh well uh, there's a decline it's it's maybe a few weeks or a few months or or something like that sometimes that's the case but sometimes it can be it can be years sometimes it can be decades and you don't know how long it's going to last and 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 you are in that constantly assuming that you no know, that you're going to have to do this long term and and this is going to be a, a permanent thing and the, in the case of of, of parents with who have children with disabilities that often means for the rest of your life or as long as you're physically capable of uh, of that and and i don't i think that's that is something that the long term nature of that regardless of like which end of the the spectrum we're talking about is difficult to convey to people it's it, it is difficult to communicate what that means to people who haven't experienced it yet because it's it's not just a single thing it's it's every day and and, and that sort of long term scale is is very difficult to process did you have difficulty having conversations with folks who who hadn't experienced that directly in that way it's so funny i have an autistic grandchild too and so and until you walk in some, I mean, I haven't walked in my son's and his, my daughter-in-law's shoes as having an autistic child, but just watching what they have to go through day in and day out. And, you know, just, just, just them needing a break and, yeah. uh, you know, some support emotionally and physically. So yes, yeah. it's very challenging, but with my mother, I ended up when she, ended up having um, Alzheimer's, I had to get some help because of my family was so big. And I was, you know, run into this family and some were living out of state. And so, um, which was really hard for me because I wanted to be the sole caregiver. And sometimes you just physically can't. Um, And so I ended up getting caregivers. But then again, you still have to be in charge of the caregivers. You still want to be there as much as possible and I think that's so important because I just also heard the statistics and I didn't write them down. But the people that are in facilities or even if your parent is right down the street with caregivers, such a small percentage of people that really go and see their elderly parents. It yeah. just was mind boggling that people don't care enough until they're not on like their best deathbed to go visit their loved ones. And I just think it's so crucial. I mean, they took care of us. And so I just feel like that's just, you yeah. know, uncalled for. Really. Yeah, no, no. I, yeah, and, and, and I know what you're saying. I, and I think that in order to facilitate that, as, as you indicate, it is so important to provide the supports to, to, to make that possible because, because often we, we put it, on the caregiver and make an assumption based on the relationship that that they have to this person that that they're they're just going to be able to do it because they're they're related to them in some way and when that's possible when they have the resources when they have the bandwidth to to be able to do that that's wonderful and 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 I think most people in that situation genuinely want to but but as 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 you know from from having uh you know a big family and having a lot to do like it it, it is it is so difficult to manage that and and there are so few consistent supports out there especially for for the things that are are really needed which is just like you know you know being there and 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 and, and coverage and and often uh, you know f- uh, financial uh, uh support I mean, you you went through a couple of different like, and I think I think a lot of people do. I yeah, I certainly did. Certainly, there was a moment where I realized what was going on with our daughter, and um, and you know also you know uh, realizing what was going on with my my mother in law <laughs> for that matter in the last uh, a, a couple of years, and you realize okay, this is your you're in that place and you have to deal with that emotionally. And that's, that's one level. And then realizing what are the resources that you need to actually get the job done. And you have to process both of those simultaneously, figure all of that out while you're doing what can often be a 24-7 job. Exactly. 
Yeah. And and the caregivers, you know, you want the best you can get. And I, I had the resources to get caregivers for yeah. my mother. Not everybody does, like you said. Right. And then right. they may have to put them in a facility or, you know, or, you know, either a nursing home or a, a oh, what is it before they go? Anyway. Assisted livings. It's it's, it's, I, it's weird how many different things they get called because like, oh, I, yeah. it, but but I but and and, and, it's, and it is indicative, I think, of how fractured and difficult to navigate the whole system is because there's something for this and there's something for that kind of condition and there's something for yeah. this and you don't and, and if you're just starting that journey, you have no idea the difference between all of those. It's you really don't, and you have to start researching, and you're like, yeah. I don't even have time to research, and then you start asking a million people, and I think yeah. it's really crucial to research and make sure you try to find the best fit, but again, it's very complicated and hard, and yeah. then if you haven't, you've never uh, managed caregivers, that's hard yeah. too, and it, and or if you're putting them in a facility, then it's it's like putting your child in a school. I think you have to uh, really get involved yeah. because because you want the best care you can for your loved one. And there's good workers and there's bad workers, whether they're in a facility or whether you've got caregivers. And if you aren't on top of it, just like a child in school, yeah. then your loved one's going to get lost. And that's just the way it is. But I think the more you're involved and these caregivers, that's a hard job. And it I is. think you, the more you are you are kind to them if you find the good ones that you love yeah. and you're kind to them and you let them know how important and how blessed you are to have them. I think your loved one will get better care. And I think um, that's just how the world works, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and I think it's very important to be really involved if you can't care, you know, be there every second with the loved ones. And I think I the best thing I did for my mother was put cameras in her place. Because I thought we do that for our children, um, and my mom couldn't speak for herself, and um, and that's how I found ended up finding good help. And I, I let them know that I had cameras, and I think it made them more accountable. Yeah. Um, but I think you know we forget the elderly; they just they just are so you know they can't you know we have to be advocates for them because they can't speak for themselves anymore yeah I, 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 yeah you 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 can't help but be i mean that's that's the thing and and even if you are able to find good folks mm-hmm. who are who are caregivers and that's a process it really is it's it's it, it, yeah. it, it takes it takes years years sometimes um yeah. you are still and and my my wife will say this again and again you are like you are the the person who is ultimately responsible. Oh, you totally you are you are the one. And like if 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 someone doesn't show up or if someone needs to reschedule something or someone can't make it, it's you. It's you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's we forget that, and it's like it's a lot of stress knowing that you are the one that has to make the decisions. Yeah. Those people aren't making the decisions. Yeah. And you're the one, you know, that, oh, did I do the right thing? Did I not? So it's a lot of emotional stress. I'm sure you know. Yeah. It just, yeah, it can take a toll on you. It really can. What changed with with your situation and your mother's situation once the pandemic hit? Uh, how How did that complicate everything that you did yes it really did complicate everything because she was uh i told you she became my baby yeah and so when she got sick um a caregiver had gotten a cold and so i went "Uh oh and so i was like do not come back to work um but it was too late but the doctor thought she had double pneumonia so we're like okay i'm like okay maybe i can save her maybe i can save her uh, but again, my doc, her doctor was saying, take her to the ER. And my daughter's a PA in Atlanta. We're in Florida. And she said, Mom, don't take her to the ER. You'll never see her again, um, yeah. which was probably the case. And so I was like, how can I drop my baby off at the ER um, and never see her again? Because um, she was really sick at this point. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do it. What am I going to do? So I fought with the doctor for over an hour and he screamed at me, what do you want? And I said, I want home health. 